Mm-hmm. I'm just situating myself. Mm-hmm. Ooh, did you hear that? Yeah. That was my neck. Hi everybody, welcome to Go Big Bore or Go Home, where recoil is required. Why? Because we're the house of the rising gun, naturally. Last month we discussed the top five big bore handgun cartridges for taking medium sized game, and this month we're gonna talk about the top five big bore handgun cartridges for taking large dangerous game. This time the stakes are gonna be much higher because the game involved has the size and oftentimes the offensive might to hunt you back. And by that, I mean everything from brown bears to elephants. If it walks this earth, these cartridges have to be able to drop it. And looking at what cartridges I chose, I took a lot of things into consideration, including power, packability, availability of firearms, availability of ammunition and reloading components, and the ability to get off a follow-up shot, meaning recoil and how it affects you. I also considered that the level of hunter is going to kind of have an impact on what cartridge I might recommend to them. So not everybody's going to agree on this. I want to be very clear. This is one of those uh, lists that's going to be very kind of opinion heavy. But I worked very hard to put things together and put a lot of thought into very carefully putting the calibers in this list and also what my order was going to be. But let's get down to business and let's take a look at the top five big bore handgun cartridges for large dangerous game. Number five, the 454 Casul. This cartridge has hunted it all, and the power it has is indisputable. It shoots a .452 inch bullet weighing between 240 grains and 400 grains from 1,400 feet per second for the latter to 1,900 feet per second for the former. It does this via extremely high chamber pressure, capping off at 65,000 PSI. It is a beast for beasts. First designed by Dick Casula in 1957, written about in 1959, and then released in a production revolver in 1983, this cartridge has the resume to back itself up. It has taken everything to my knowledge, so it belongs on this list for sure. And given the brass length of the cartridge being 1.383 inches, it does require a long cylinder, but not one that requires a long frame. That makes it very packable. You can find it chambered in the original Freedom Arms Model 83, the Ruger Super Red Hawk and Super Red Hawk Alaskan, Ruger Super Blackhawk Bisley, the Taurus Raging Bull and Raging Hunter, and the Magnum Research BFR. Not to mention custom-built revolvers as well. All will be easy to carry in terms of size and weight. Ammo and components are also a breeze to find these days. Sure, it's not as common as a 44 Magnum, but there are tons of ammunition companies that load for it. Brass is available from several companies as well, and bullets are pretty easy to come by. So feeding your monster and finding a viable hunting round will be cake. Here's where the downsides come into play. The recoil of this caliber is some of my least favorite to put up with. It hits you hard, but it's the way the cartridge recoils that can make life difficult. The high pressure really makes it snap back with intensity and can wrench your wrists. Getting back on target for a follow-up shot can honestly be a challenge. While I think our number one and number two choices push your palm harder, I consider both more livable in terms of recoil. When it comes right down to it, the 454 Casul is the round I would suggest most often to a rifle hunter new to hunting with a handgun. Easy to find everything you need, familiar size and packability, sufficient power to take the game. But the recoil makes follow-up shots hard, and there are more powerful, though less common choices. And that leaves the 454 Casul at number 5. Number 4. The 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. I can already hear the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum fans getting angry. But before you do, just hear me out. The 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum was released in 2003 along with Smith & Wesson's newest revolver frame, the X-Frame. This cartridge was designed to be the most powerful handgun cartridge in the world, capable of taking absolutely any game the hunter desired. And it absolutely did not oversell itself, as this thing could easily hunt dinosaurs, woolly mammoths, and many other long-extinct megafauna. The cartridge shoots a .500 inch bullet from a 1.625 inch brass casing. Chamber pressure is high at 60,000 PSI, according to Sammy. In terms of power, this cartridge brings it. Bullets from 275 grains all the way to 700 grains. Velocities that just scorch the air as they zip through it, shooting 440 grain hardcast bullets at up to 1,625 feet per second. I think you could probably hunt some armored vehicles with this cannon. While firearms are a little limited with two manufacturers, Smith & Wesson and Magnum Research, those firearms are easy to track down despite not being cheap. 
Ammunition and components are remarkably easy to find given that its reputation as the biggest and the baddest has made it popular. Although those aren't cheap either. Expect to pay up to $5 a round for some specialty hunting ammo. There are three major downsides to this round though. The first is the obvious. It isn't packable in any sense of the word with the lightest entrance weighing in at 4 pounds and the elongated frames required for the very massive cylinders create that weight and take a lot of space. This is a hunting handgun that should be carried in a chest rig or possibly a bandolier type holster. When you're in the field or trying to steady yourself for that all important shot, ounces become pounds. The second downside is recoil getting in the way of a follow up shot. There's no way around the recoil of this monster. Even with muzzle brakes, the laws of physics can't be denied and it can be really hard to put the gun back on target in a hurry. The final downside may surprise you, but the cartridge can be too powerful. This comes up with the integrity of the bullet. Newton's third law states every action has an equal and opposite reaction, meaning when a bullet hits a game animal, the bullet exerts the same amount of force on the animal as the animal exerts on the bullet. This can cause bullets, even hard cast ones, to come apart if they are at too high of a velocity. They can also behave oddly, veering off and under the skin instead of going through to the organs and in some cases disintegrating violently and destroying a bone or joint without creating a mortal wound. This would be a bad and possibly dangerous scenario which is why hunting ammo for the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum can show lowered velocities or even prefer to use monometal bullets that are harder. This is a cartridge that I think would suit a moderate to well experienced hunter as they would be cognizant of proper ammo choices, the best way to carry, and how to control the gun for a follow up shot if needed. So don't think I'm selling this one short. It's just not my first choice for this purpose. Number 3. The 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum Some folks will be confused and some will be cheering, but I actually feel this is a better hunting choice. Hear me out before you tell me I'm a moron, though if you really need to, go right ahead. The 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum was released in 2005 with the intention of making the most of the long cylinder of the Smith & Wesson X-Frame and generating the highest velocity handgun projectiles ever. And it certainly does, let me tell you. If you've ever wanted 4570 government power in a revolver, this cartridge has your name written all over it. The cartridge shoots a .452 inch bullet from a 1.8 inch brass casing. Chamber pressure is on par with the 454 Casul at 65,000 PSI. It can shoot light bullets of 200 grains at a mind-blowing 2,200 feet per second and also shoot heavy bullets all the way up to 400 grains at a blistering 1,550 feet per second. This generates muzzle energy that is pretty much on par with the big 500. I like to think of it as the 454 Casul on steroids. And while the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum has the same high velocities that give bullet integrity issues in the 500, due to being a smaller caliber, they have a better cross-sectional density as more of the mass is stacked on top of itself instead of spread out wider like the 500. So the integrity of the bullets seems to hold up better. The guns are slightly easier to find for this round, being Smith & Wesson's X-Frame, Magnum Research's BFR, and, just recently, the Taurus Raging Bull and Raging Hunter. The ammo is about as easy to find as the 500, and just as expensive. Bullets are easier to find, though, but the brass is a little less common, also pricey enough to feel like you got gut punched. The weight issues from the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum are the same here, providing issues with packability and fatigue after a day of hiking or extended time trying to hold it steady. But where I feel this round has the leg up on the 500 is that the weight and a good muzzle break makes the recoil pretty reasonable to live with in my opinion. I feel like I could squeeze off a follow up shot much more quickly and effectively with the 460 versus the 500 or even the 454. And given the power it generates and the ability to shoot heavy bullets, I would prefer 325 to 360 grains personally, I think it is the better choice over the 500 if only by a small margin. I would again say this cartridge is for moderate to well-experienced hunters, as I think that they could really get the most out of this round and enjoy its use. But the number one and number two choices just seem like better options to me. Number two, the 475 line ball. Choosing between this round and the number one round was agony for me. Partly because, personal bias here, this is the round on this list that I tend to be the most accurate with. But not everyone will have the same experience, so I put that aside. The 475 Linebaugh was designed by John Linebaugh in 1988 to replace his 500 Linebaugh round as he believed at the time that the brass being used to make the 500 was going to be discontinued. Thankfully that never happened and we still have both. The 475 Linebaugh was originally cut down 4570 brass at a length of 1.4 inches and shoots a .476 inch bullet. It operates at lower pressures than the previous three entries with a max of 50,000 PSI, but usually is in the high 30,000 range. 
This is a round that gets it done with wide, heavy bullets, weighing from 325 grains up to 440 grains. A favorite loading of mine is a 425 grain bullet at 1,350 feet per second. There is nothing out there you can't take with the 475 line ball. This one's a little tougher to come by as it's only factory produced in the Freedom Arms Model 83 and the Magnum Research BFR, but there are custom ones out there if you're willing to spend the money. And like the 454 Casul, the revolvers that shoot it are fairly normal large frame revolvers that are much easier to pack than the previous two. And the recoil is only worse in my opinion than the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum. It's still a tough bucking Bronco to control, but I feel like its overall characteristics make follow-up shots easier than a 454 Casul or the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. Now for what kept it from number one. I feel like the recoil is tougher to control than our number one pick, and when it comes to availability and components, that 475 caliber makes bullets way harder to find, especially in tough times like at the time of making this video. These and 41 caliber bullets have been harder to find than a politician's integrity. While brass is more common than our number one, as is factory ammo, both are cartridges that reloaders will get the most out of, and to me that plays a big role. This is a cartridge that I think is best suited for well-experienced hunters who will no doubt be into reloading. At that level, the 475 line ball is hard to beat for hunting large, dangerous game. But in my opinion, there's one round that I think narrowly gets the top spot. Number one. Drum roll, please. The 500 JRH. When it comes to getting a good cartridge for large, dangerous game, this is just about as close to perfect as I think you can get. The cartridge was designed by Jack R. Huntington and released in 2004. It is, for all intents and purposes, a shorter version of the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. It sports a .500 inch bullet in a 1.4 inch brass case and has a pressure ceiling of 45,000 PSI. In terms of power, it will shoot bullets between 350 and 440 grains at velocities of 1,500 feet per second for the 350 grainer and 1,325 feet per second for the 440 grain bullet. You can expect to shoot bullets around 300 feet per second slower than the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. While that may sound like a step back, it's not necessarily true. This cartridge shoots wide heavy bullets like the 475 line ball and at comparable velocities. While there are faster 50s, this one has everything you need with less concern over bullet integrity. The revolvers chambered in it are a little larger than a Ruger Super Blackhawk, making them extremely packable. This is nice because the recoil is not so intense that extra weight is needed to tame it. And with lower pressures than every round on this list, I would again say it recoils less than all previous calibers save the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum. It's honestly more livable than the 475 line bought by a small margin. The downsides are the availability of pretty much everything involved. Magnum Research makes the BFR in this round, but if you don't want one, you'll have to buy a custom-made revolver. Only Buffalo Boar offers ammo for it, and they are also the only folks with the properly head-stamped brass, which is so pricey it feels like a kick to the groin. The dies are pretty much just using 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum dies. But, 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 but. Due to using the same bullets as the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, the JRH is easier to find bullets for than any other 50 caliber save the 500 Wyoming Express, which uses the same bullets as well. But the 500 Wyoming Express is all but impossible to find brass for these days. The 500 line ball uses .510 inch bullets, so they are almost as rare as the 475 line ball's bullets. And if you want, you can cut down 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum brass for your 500 JRH to save money, so it's not the worst downside. This is another round for the well-experienced hunter familiar with reloading, but I feel it's the best choice for dialing in the right ammo, getting a solid revolver, and having stopping power to spare without a follow-up shot being impeded by recoil. And for me, if I was going to be on the trail for large game, this would be my choice to take with me. So let's recap the list before we go. Number 5. The 454 Casul. Easy to get what you need in all respects, but you could use more power and less violent recoil. Number 4. The 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. All the power you'll ever need, and possibly too much of it. Number 3. The 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum. Lots of power, but still lots of weight. Number 2. The 475 Line Ball. When you can find the right bullets, it's a true hunting badass. And number 1. The 500 JRH. Lots of packable power that won't beat you up too much. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoyed the list. Do you agree with the calibers that I chose and the order that I put them in? 
What would be your choice for hunting large and dangerous game? Please be sure to share your thoughts in the comment section below as this is one of those topics that's very much open to debate and I'd really love to know what you're thinking. If you've been watching the channel for a while and you've seen me wearing some of these Caliber Slogan t-shirts, I've had a few people request to be able to get one of their own. If you look in the links for this video and actually all our videos now, we do actually have a section for merch. So please feel free to pick up a t-shirt or a hat or a glass or a bottle opener if you'd like. If you made it this far and you didn't enjoy yourself or have a good time, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch our video and give us a chance. We really appreciate it. If you did enjoy the content, please like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out and helps us grow. And as always, guys, go big boar or go home. So let's recap. Recrap. Crap once, crap twice. Recrap.